Welcome to today's tutorial on preparing the spray coating machine Venn Spray 1 for painting. The topic of paint preparation includes, for example, masking the booth walls from the inside so that the booth walls are not so heavily soiled with spray mist. Then we pull the paper tape over the transport belt, which is to protect the belt so that it does not get dirty at all. After this, we do a short safety check and the machine is prepared and you can start coating. First, we move the gun drive to the back. We start with this button. Afterwards, the button next to it. The point of moving the gun drive backwards is that you make room for a second colleague to assist inside the machine to mask the booth walls with the masking film roll because no one has arms long enough to be able to tape it all by themselves from front to back. Afterwards, we open the doors. Take the masking film roll. The foil is self-adhesive and works a little bit like wallpapering, only without glue, and it is easier. Place the foil Rub it on briefly and then pass it on to the colleague who would now be sitting in the machine. He pulls it through to the back, cuts it off, puts it on again, and you have already covered a part. Of course, if some parts are still uncovered, you can cover it up. You don't have to stick them together like you do with wallpaper at home. Just let them overlap and rub them on. After all, it's only about protecting the cabin walls, nothing more. For parts that can be removed, such as the ventilation baffle on the exhaust system, the two side sliding panels, I would recommend put them on the table and apply the foil there. This makes it easier for you. You can cover the lamp with the masking foil. It does not matter. Light still comes through, as you can see here. I would also tape the rear doors from the inside because there is always a little bit of overspray, which would have a negative effect on the look of the black rear doors. You can do the same with the front doors. On the inside of the glass, just tape over it. The more you cover, the more you have protected, the more you are on the safe side. Ali has just shown you how to mask the machine. And now we show you how to thread the paper tape correctly. To do this, we first lift the roller infeed conveyor. Incidentally, it is supported by gas struts, so it's very easy to lift it up. So, here we can already see our paper roll. It is supplied originally on the trolley as standard equipment, so we just have to push it in. That works very easy because we have the guides in the front and in the back, and so it is no problem for us. If the roll should be empty, you could easily change it, which we will show you in another tutorial. Okay, next, let's go to the rollers. Here we have a silver roll and a gray roll. We take this paper tape after the silver roll and then lead it in front of the gray roll. If you have already installed the splash guards, please make sure that the paper band is also threaded under the splash guards. This is very important so that the function is also given later. The paper is quite sturdy. You can grab it a little bit harder. That is no problem at all. Let us now demonstrate this to you. Now we're finished with the infeed and we go to the rear outfeed to feed the paper band further in. This is the operating side and we want to pull the paper band further through. If you have already installed the cover plate on the back, take it out. The better you can pull the paper band through. Now pay special attention to the splash guards again so that the paper tape is also laid underneath them so that the function is given.
We are now at the out feed to connect the paper with the winding roll. And this works as following. We pull the paper over the first gray roll and let it drop down. Then we take it from the operating side under the winding roll and tape it at the front. Let us demonstrate this to you. Now you are already done. Please make sure that you do not forget the counterweights on the entry side. We have already taped the cabin with anti-static foil to protect the cabin walls, windows, lamps and so on from overspray. We have fed in the paper band to protect the conveyor belt from spray. But to be able to paint, we have to connect the paint supply. Many of you have bought the paint supply. On the subject of connection, first of all, there are two paint circuits installed in the machine. Each color circuit has two hoses that come out of the machine twice, marked F1 for circuit one and accordingly with F2 for the second circuit. For connection, you take the hoses. As you can see, there are only two connections free. It doesn't matter which hose is connected to which connection because we have installed ring lines here. Paint will go through in any case and will arrive at the guns and work. To get the pump to work, we still have to supply the pump with air. For this, we have a distribution block on the back of the pump stand with a radiator fitting plus different sizes of hose nozzles. According to what you have in your factories for air pressure lines, you can use a suitable hose to operate the pump with the correspondingly large air hose. Secure the hose clamp ready. The pump is connected and ready for painting. Now my colleague Sarah will show you a little bit more about the safety check and then you can finally start with the paint job. Last but not least, we will now check the safety functions of the system. Of course, this was tested at our factory, but better to be safe than sorry. Here we have three relevant safety checks that we can test. On the one hand, we have the compressed air regulator, the door safety sensors, and the emergency stop button. Now I'll start with the compressed air regulator. It is, of course, designed to ensure that the process runs properly and smoothly. That means that we also paint correctly. I'll just turn it down now to simulate a malfunction. As you can see, a malfunction is directly shown in red on our display. To know what it is, we click on it and have a look. Malfunction compressed air supply. If we don't know exactly, mm, where could it be? There is a button with a question mark next to it, which we will click on. Here you can either look at a picture or an info text about the problems we could be dealing with. Once we have identified the reason for the problem, we can eliminate it by clicking here again and then acknowledge the problem. So, everything worked out great. Our compressed air regulator is working perfectly. Now we can move on to the next topic, namely the door safety sensors. They are located at the front doors and at the back doors. I will now test the door here. I will do this by moving the gun drive to the center and then just opening the door quickly. Then everything should immediately come to a stop. As you can see, it worked great. In order to test the rear doors, it's best to have a colleague to help you. Now that we have acknowledged this malfunction, we come to the last one. This is the emergency stop button. Of course, we never want to use it in the best case, but we should check it. Now I do the same as before. I let the gun drive move forward again and press the button. 
the gun drive stops. That means our button works. To acknowledge the malfunction, we turn the button back out and press the check mark. Our safety check is now complete, and I wish you a lot of fun with the coding work.